two things happened this week that made me actually rethink about PathPilot. One is so many folks wanted to see it and ask questions about it at the open house. And it was great that Andy and Matt from Tormach were here to answer a lot of the more sophisticated questions. The second thing that happened is it saved my butt with a tool. I had a twist drill in there. I mismeasured the height. It went and it rapided into the workpiece. And I got lucky because it was rapiding pretty straight down. And I hit space bar. It was my hand happened to be on the space bar. And it stopped like that. And it's funny because I never thought mock was slow at stopping, but I've done that before in mock and it travels enough further that you know the tool crashes or it's just different. Pathpilot stopped immediately. So here are the 10 things I now love about Pathpilot. I made a list and I don't ever want to become a shill boy for this stuff, but seriously, this is the stuff that I actually care about on a daily basis. That's how it affects me. I consider myself a user of a machine, not a critique, you know, some sideline guy who just wants to judge everything for where it's good and bad. And I just, I like using the machine at the end of the day. I don't think about PathPilot a lot, but these things are what made me think, hey, I actually do like this. So number one, the space bar stops immediately. I love that. Number two, I like the tool offsets better. I never liked in mock where you had to go click on the menu, open the window up, scroll down through it, and then it was apply and okay. And a few times, I swear, I lost the height offset and to the point where I used to now go and open it and re-scroll down and check and make sure it was there. PathPilot, I like it better. If you're on a tool number, like let's say you have tool 100 in there and you go to the offsets, it starts the offsets window at tool two, uh, 100. Pretty smart, pretty nice, I like it. Number three, the conversational. I gotta do a video, I have a new uh, thread mill coming, but the conversational actually is great. I've been using it, love it, more to come on that. For this max bow feature, if you wanna, if you're not sure what you like, you can scroll this thing down and it'll basically keep the RPMs up, but it'll slow down as you're coming into the part. You can do it during the part as well. But I really like it if I'm just not sure about something and I wanna make sure I don't crash the machine and I just wanna kinda feel it out, it's been reliable. You can actually adjust the screen while you're a roll the, the uh, CAD, the G-code preview around while the machine is running. It's, it's actually nice to know that the system is that robust and it's capable of doing that. And um, it's not something I do a ton, but it's nice to know you can. And I actually did do it the other day when I was looking at a part and I wanted to see where it was kind of sort of going. So I like that. Run from here works. Someone was telling me at the open house that they got it working great on Mach 3 and, and hey, uh, maybe, maybe it did, but I had a few bad experiences with it. When I Googled it, it seemed to be a common symptom. I right click in PathPilot, choose set start line. You do need to make sure that it's gonna restart the spindle and the G code below it, but it's been pretty solid for me. When you ref XYZ home or send them home, you don't lose position. I love it. I accidentally hit the E stop button and I have to go ref all my axes again. I, uh, it, it repeats and I, and I have confidence in that now. I, I don't have to retest the part or re-zero the part. Big win on that. The ninth one is the increased resolution. This is getting into the nerdier stuff, but it, yes, the hardware with the software is a higher resolution. And that is a good thing for everyone, which is nice. I, the first day I ran PathPilot, I was like, I feel like it's running smoother. But then I was like, this is like selective perception or you're, you're just thinking this because you want to like it. So I actually was too embarrassed to ask Tormach guys if that was true. And uh, it ends up it is true. So that's awesome. And then the number 10 actually goes back to Tormach and the fact that it's going to be a great product for them because they can support it. They put the effort into it. There's been a phenomenal process back and forth with little quirks and bugs and, and, and tweaks. They've got more coming, I'm, I'm sure, on various parts of it, including like the conversational. And you know, this thing like this white paper, it shows uh, as the engineer, the sort of uh, guy who likes to understand it, you basically get, it's like you're sitting in one of Tormach's meetings and going through the process. And yeah, they're probably not gonna get perfect, everything perfect, at least on the first time. But I think it's pretty cool that they take the time to publish these papers that give some background into why they developed the software and the, and the give and takes. And actually, honestly, all of their white papers are pretty darn good reads. Uh, the one on the PCNC, there's a, there's a bunch of them on their website, but I forgot the one of the biggest, uh, soft limits, oh my gosh, who is sick of jogging to the top of the axis or the front of the Y or the X and having it ref out, you lose your position, you got a home, you won't ever come close to regain, you got an XYZ all over again, soft limits, oh my gosh, folks, one of the biggest daily comfort things, I know I can go to the end, and I'm not gonna ref out, it is 
awesome. That makes a difference. So sorry I forgot to mention that uh, when reading my list. That is all, folks. Take care. See you soon.